She fires up with the key. How about that? Well, a little bit of catch up here. Um, not sure where we've probably left off. This is kind of piecemeal as I'm working. There's lots of little jobs that you can just get done in 15, 20 minutes. Um, one I did off camera uh, was getting this pewter all on. Uh, so that's all tucked in. That's nice, nice to have in and off the floor. <coughs> Excuse me, same way. Uh, tuck the rear heater on so that's all sitting where it should. It's all buttoned up. Nice thing there is uh, we've got our heater hoses all tied in going all the way up front here. Uh, these are loose but I've got to tuck in the front heater. Uh, but the nice thing is once we get that snipped back in, which he's sitting right there, uh, we can put uh, refill the cooling system. I ended up having to drain drain the block to redo all those heater lines going through the firewall. Um, so now we'll be able to actually get fluid back in it and coolant instead of just water this time. So that'll be nice. Um, the heater is all redone. Uh, I did that over the winter time. Uh, one of those things that's nice just to work in the basement in the nice warm, warm temperatures up here in the north. Uh, these Hoses were actually pretty good. These boots were a little stiff, but I managed to get them kind of softened up a little bit. Uh, the top part of these hoses was pretty crusty. Um, it's very interesting how some of their rubber materials, it's like brand new, like the heater hoses are from 75, and they're still soft and like new. Uh, but other pieces like these top couplers, they just crumbled in your hands. Uh, same way with those drain hoses. There's two drains that come from that vent and run down and go through that hole in the trans tunnel. There's one on each side, so two drain hoses come down. Those are just, they just crumble. Um, so it's interesting how some of their rubber stuff stayed pretty good, others didn't. Um, I ended up picking up a couple two and a half inch silicone coupler boots. These are for like a, somebody running a turbo. <laughs> you know, it's like intake boots. Um, they're Mishimoto's. Uh, for what it's worth. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I just looked for black silicone two and a half inch. That fits over these guys. We'll see how it fits up top. Should fit. That is the dimensions of the old ones. Um, so I ended up getting a pair of those and that should let me get these bu button back up. Um, and then we just got to hook up the two heater core lines. That's these two, two little guys here. Um, they've actually got hose in them. Um, so they kind of got these weird little hose covers. Uh, but first things first, we just got to slide that feller up on the firewall. I think everything I need behind there is done. There's two little bolts that I got to tuck in that were just dummy. Apparently there's something different. You can kind of see it through the radio plate. Um, but yeah, there were two bolts that didn't do anything. Um, so you just want to plug those holes. Um, otherwise, we'll get those in and then we'll get you guys in the stand and we'll see if we can get that scooched up in there, get those hoses clamped back on, and then hopefully get the cooling system all closed up and start to fill that back up. So, onward. Well, time to see if we can dunk the old heater box in. I am not sure which get him in at least. Get him back. Pardon me, I might need to come in from your side. Let's see what the better. Better ish. Come on, Mr. Sniper. There you go. Yeah, we'll undock you guys. So 
So there's our coupler. He's tucked up on the defroster duct, basically. It fits fairly well. Uh, it's not, it could be a little bit tighter. Um, it's not like it's got a seal issue, but what I think I'm going to do is just put a, a zip tie just to pull that top in. There are kind of some, if I pull it down, you can see it, there are some dogs or kind of grippers on there. Um, so adding something just to put a little bit of tension on it will hold it up nice and tight. It's not going to go anywhere. It's going to get pushed up by the vent anyway, uh, but we'll just snug her up a little bit. Let's do the same for the other side, see what we got. It's kind of funny, you want to sit on the floor, but they've got the uh, door lip there, which makes it not particularly comfortable. And this is also why I left the speedometer out. Because it's just easier. Come on, get up in there. There we go. Well, let's see if we can get her situated. They don't give you a whole lot of room there, do they? I'm going to be that lucky on these mock bolts. I have a suspicion they are made to be put in with those boots out. Basically, if this lower boot was softer, you would pop it out and have free access and then pop it in later. But it's a little bit aged. So I'm going to leave him in there and just reach behind it with a Ratcheting box end. Because I think we could get it. Yep. Well, I moved you, but I forgot to turn you on. Uh, but otherwise, just dunked on these short little stubs. Use the original Hose clamps, oddly enough, they're a zinc instead of a yellow CAD, but they were the original ones, so original ones they went back in. Uh, gonna clean these up a little bit more, uh, give them a little bit of a buff. Um, they're, they're a different color, they're not the same pewter um, that all the other stuff is. Same with this, this guy, uh, he covers up down here basically. Uh, but oddly enough, it's like a completely one-off color. It's darker than the uh, like seat backs in the rear heater. Um, you're like, oh, you're gonna go upside down, aren't you? So there's the rear heater. If you look there, it is a different metallic gray, which is kind of odd. Uh, why they did that, I don't know. Uh, but in, they're actually in pretty decent shape. There's a few scuffs here and there. Uh, it gives a little bit of the patina remnants which isn't a bad thing it's uh it's obviously a rig that's been around a while so um i'm gonna pop these screws out i'm gonna go run these give them a quick little buff uh see what they do um should get a little bit more of a shine like this guy does i don't yeah, you can see he cleaned up pretty well oh that was just hitting it with rubbing compound and then wax I gave these guys a light hit, but they're still a little bit funky on the edges, so we'll, as long as they're off, we'll run them through, um, then we can dunk those back on there. Be right back. Well, the heater's all dunked back in, uh, nice and clean. Hoses are all bundled up, tucked in there where they need to go, vent is. Uh, I do have this air duct, basically it goes Kind of up there like that, tucks in, basically drives it from the fan on the firewall up over to the heater core. 
Um, just a couple bolts, so he's pretty minor. But if you notice, there's one little guy right back there, and that is the mounting strap for the little vent tube that comes from this guy that runs down to this hole. Um, I can still get up in here to get the vent tube on, or the drain tube, um, but I will probably need to keep access to get there. Technically you could kind of get with that duct in there, but you might as well leave it off, make your life a little bit easier. Um, so heater's mostly in, at least I have all the coolant lines tied up um, so we can actually dunk some antifreeze in the old girl um, and get the system burped. So that'll be nice then when we run it, it's got coolant in it. Um, it did have water in it when we did all the test fires. Everything burped there. Um, so everything's working, thermostat opens, radiator doesn't have any leaks, yada, yada, yada. Uh, we will have to check anything we mucked with, which is basically this heater valve and then back through the firewall. Uh, but getting closer and closer to having a dash that looks like a dash. Uh, it's kind of nice to have that heater back in out of the basement. That was one of the first things I cleaned up, but it's just one of the winter projects. Um, so, chipping away. Um, I did manage to track down some tubing that works. It's actually heater hose. I had to tweak it a little bit to get it to fit up on the top. Um, basically kind of carved out a little bit because uh, it's basically double wall with that cord in the middle. You really only needed single wall for this. It's just a drain tube. So up where the flange is, I basically just carved out the inner inner wall and then she slid on. She fit through all the nuggets and stuff, so sitting pretty good there. Um, so then we were able to dunk on the heater box, so that's all tucked in. Still has the, I don't know if you can read it or not. Mm -hmm. No, probably not. Um, still has the September 75 sticker from when they installed the Warren hubs. Um, so just kind of fun there that that's still in pretty good shape, cleaned up pretty good. They do have aftermarket reproductions, but this one still actually has the September 75 date on it, which is kind of neat. Um, I did fire up the fan. Everything blows how it's supposed to, um, including the rear. So heater system's sitting pretty good. So next up, going to work our way across. Dunk in the glove box. It's just a couple screws and a cable screw. Uh, ashtray's just a couple screws, and she dunks in, and we should be able to put the gauge cluster in. I did leave them all in their original paint. Um, there's the glove box door. That one's in good shape. Uh, pretty pretty original. Uh, the ashtray was actually pretty good as well. I don't know if you can see. Um, there's a little bit of pitting here and there on the gauge cluster, but I buffed it out. Uh, so it's at least kind of got a smooth finish. Looks pretty good. Uh, it's kind of nice to keep the original paint because it's only original once, um, and it is in pretty good shape, uh, especially across all three of them. Um, it's not really worth repainting them all just because the gauge cluster has a little bit of pits here and there. Um, so we're going to dunk those in. They're all cleaned up. Um, like I say, we'll start with the glove box, work our way across, see what we got. Once we get those in, should be able to pop the clips in, throw the dash pads on, and really even the main dash, dash pad. It's got to go on before the windshield, I think. Um, so then we'll have basically the dash all assembled and ready to go, which is nice. Um, and I did clean up the floor mats this morning. Got to do a little bit of patching here and there. There's a couple small tears. Um, and we'll give them a good coat of armor all. And then we'll be able to dunk those in before we put the seats on, just because it's easier to wrangle that in before there's seats in the way. I mean, it is made to come out while well, the seats are in there, but there's no sense fighting it when you don't have seats in. So that's the plan. Let's get cracking. I had a screwdriver at one point. <clears throat> Those all look the same, which is fine by me.
we'll just set this guy here. If I recall, it was a little bit finicky to get the cluster to clip in. It's got two little dogs on the bottom and then the top screws in, but to get it to lean, it's a little weird. Um, and I need my little ratchet. Blue stripe to the inside on the negative. I don't feel like pulling this apart just because I got that backwards. I uh, gave myself a little bit of extra speedometer cable. Um, you're going to hook it up at that uh, emissions calculator computer thing. So you might as well give yourself a little bit more to try and get him seated. I don't know if I can reach it. Oh, no, that's not a good idea. Ooh, there it is. I don't remember how that goofy clip worked, though. Yeah. Well, let's give her another test. So speedometer still works, that's a good thing. Uh, you do have to leave the speedometer cable unplugged until you get it clipped in. Then you gotta reach your mitts up in there, unfortunately. And uh, then you can clip it on there. There's the other one. I just had it. Huh? What in the world? Oop, there it is. It's hiding under the screwdriver. So pretty, pretty good that everything should work. I did plug it in and check it. Oil pressure sender worked, fuel gauge worked, amp meter worked, uh, temp gauge should work. Um, lights and doobly-doos all worked. So it uh, should be sitting pretty good there. Uh, so it's kind of nice to have the dash get closer buttoned up. We'll kick the key on, sniper should fire up. There she goes. Got ourselves a heater fan, high low, which is nice. Um, you can kind of see them hiding back there. Those are your dash lights. Um, left blinker, right blinker. Those are working out back. You can kind of see them blinking away. Um, it's hard to see it in the dark here, or the light. There you can see the high beam coming on and off. Uh, otherwise, fuel gauge is just up off the peg, and ammeter is down because it's not running. Um, so all in all, that should be pretty good. Um, so clusters in, all the controls do work. The choke does not do anything. Still debating on what you can do with a spare cable under the hood. It was debating like a kill switch, um, but that gets a little bit funky. But we'll see. Otherwise... This pulls that heater valve. We'll leave him open so we'll cycle fluid through this when we run her. This just moves that flapper in the heater box over there. Wiper washer, not sure yet. Um, obviously got to get that with the windshield, but otherwise sitting pretty good. Um, we'll probably clip those dash pads on uh, just to get them out of the basement. They can go on, nothing going to hurt there. Um, and then we'll, uh, one quick one we got to do is tag on our steering arm uh, just from the steering box to this knuckle. Um, then the steering will all be tucked up and we can throw the steering wheel back on and should be able to throw the floors in and get some interior going in so we got some seats. Uh, so 
That's the plan from here. Keep chipping. Alrighty, time to clip these little dash pieces on. Uh, over the winter, kind of kept giving them a little bit of armor all, which brought them back around there a little bit dry. Uh, but they're in pretty good shape. Um, there's just little clips in the dash and little pins on these pads that just slide in and grip. They're not even really like a... They're a, just a straight pin. Um, so we should just kind of press in. And this one actually has a couple screws that go into the dash. You catch those. So same deal, three, three little pins. This one just kind of hangs out. I don't know why they decided to put screws in some of them and not the others, but what I know. This one has three screws along the bottom, and then there you can kind of see the pins, two, three, four, five. I'll take it. I do actually have the, we still have the radio delete cover, um, little plastic plate that goes in there. Right now I've been, as you can tell, I've been tucking the sniper console. I will probably make a little rack for it in there and then when you need it you can pop that cover off and use it. I don't plan on keeping it out and available. Um, it's just kind of one of those when you're tuning it and uh, anytime you checking an issue. Uh, so it's nice to have it plugged in and ready. Uh, same way for data logging. Um, if you don't have that always plugged in, uh, you can't run the data logs, I don't think, because the SD card is in that device. So it is nice to have that tucked away, um, even if you're not looking at it. Um, so sitting pretty good there. Um, might go snag the upper dash and just finish her out, because that's the last bit. Okay. Uh, there is a little light, light that shines down here. That's what this wire is for. Um, it's just kind of routes up into that dash piece. Um, I don't think there's anything that's going to get in the way of the windshield. Um, it's probably easier to put the dash on than the windshield anyway. Um, so we're going to go with that. So I'm going to go run into the parts basement and snag that guy and throw him on. Well, there is a shiny new dash right from Toyota. They actually do still make them, although they are not the cheapest part you will find. Um, so, one of those things. Uh, there's that light I was talking about. Um, I did pick up an LED for it, uh, so I'm going to pop him out and make sure that works. Uh, they tend to be polarity dependent. Um, so sometimes you'll put the bulb in and then you'll go all the way through putting it on and then it doesn't turn on because the polarity is backwards. I think I'm just going to dump that in after. Anywho. So he's got to go up. I like that. So I don't have the original dash handy. Uh, I think it's tucked away in storage. I do have it though, of course. Uh, what's interesting is it had metal fingers that tucked under this lip here, basically, to hold this top down in place. This new dash, which is OEM Toyota, does not have them, uh, but it seems like it's still got the steel stiffener. Um, so basically it's got the same rib that runs down underneath. Uh, you can kind of see it there, that black metal. Um, so it seems like they just probably stopped doing those clips, um, figuring that that steel stiffener keeps it from warping. Um, so I guess we'll just drive the screws on home. There's a bunch that basically hold it from the front. That'll run that up. And then we'll have the dash in, and then everything's kind of sitting pretty good there. And then we can start 
work on the interior back a little bit, probably get the front seats and the floor mats in, like I said. Um, and then we're kind of good back to the B pillar. Um, by then, should have my brake parts tomorrow, uh, which will let me finish the rear brakes. And then really we can kind of start jamming forward on the front clip. Um, the nice thing about getting the seats in, um, we should have a clutch, we should have brakes. We can start it with a key. We've got a drive shaft, so we should be able to move it in and out of the shop a little bit easier instead of giving her the old Armstrong push method. So I'm going to put you back in the rack. You've got a microphone again, so that's a good thing. We'll run those screws in, hold the dash in, and then it should be buttoned up at least on the dash front. It's another nice milestone. So I do have five goldy looking screws. They are all the same, and I have one, two, three, four, five spots. It's funny, it's been dashless for so long, it looks weird with the uh, dashboard back on it. I just get so used to seeing it without it. Plus, there's no windshield, so this kind of sticks up a little bit further. And I did recall you do want this in before the windshield anyway because the big windshield knobs go through it. They kind of run through these big holes on the corner. So when you pull the windshield up, those pins come forward, hold the windshield upright. So you do kind of want the, want the dash in first. One last fun one, as long as we're working our way backwards. Throw the old transfer case now back on. If I can get my mitts on it. Boy, they gave you a lot of threads there. Guess they didn't want that falling off. Yep, yep. And now I at least won't poke my eyeballs out with that one. There we go. Time to go work on some floor mats. And clean up some stuff. And just for fun, relays in there. Horn still works. Well, dash is all done. Went through, sucked all the crumbs out of the floor just from doing the work lately. One last sneak peek of the... Uh, Nice clean floors. Um, it's kind of neat to see them all buttoned up, nice fresh hardware. But they're going to get covered up with some rubber mats pretty shortly here. Um, it's hiding right over there, getting a, one last coat of armor all just to clean her up. Otherwise, that got a little bit of work to tape up the seams. But everything's in. Should be able to kind of shoot that guy on. He's got to obviously fit over the shifters and stuff um, but it'll be nice to get that in now because you got a little extra room for activities you can get it all tucked in and before we tuck all the seat rails on and the jack stand jack holding points stuff like that um, it's just easier to wrangle that guy in so we're going to finish cleaning him up we'll put you guys in the stand and then we'll get that dunked in but yeah just one last look at the uh Nice clean front floor pans now. They take a beating over the years. It's kind of neat to see them all nice and shiny and clean again. So, Alrighty, onward. Well, there she is all tucked in. Um, you can see where it clears some of the stuff for the seats. Um, the other one's kind of tucked over here. It depends on how the leg fits. I think some of them have flanges so it covers up the bolt but the leg sticks through. I think. Uh, but otherwise, pretty happy with that. Laying down alright. Um, considering it had a few tears and stuff, came out pretty good. One coat of armor all on it. Soaking it up still pretty good. I don't know what this... Uh, 
cut was for. It looked factory. It had a circle at the end, and it's nice and clean. Uh, I assume it's to help lay clean, or maybe they tucked this guy under these. Maybe that's it. You know, thanks, guys. I bet that's it. I'm guessing he tucks under versus over. That is my suspicion. So where those heater tubes come over, they let that tuck underneath at a, because the, if you remember that bracket's right about here. So I bet that's what that splits for. I'll get that when I don't have you in my hand. But otherwise, the black and white always looks nice. Um, it's interesting, the FJ40s came in a bunch of different colors and some of them look really nice on the exterior because um, they have the white the white roof and the white bezel, so the two-tone, uh, you know, some of those slate blues and the, you know, the yellows and stuff, uh, they look really nice with the two-tone. Uh, the whites obviously don't have as much contrast, so when you've got the off-white, this one was actually all white, so even the, everything that was two-tone was one-tone because the, the white they use for the body is the same they use for the two-tone. Um, but it does look really nice on the inside you know, with the white dash and the white floors and then the black mats and the black black dashboards and stuff. Uh, the white, the black on white just looks kind of nice. Um, so anywho, floor mats are in. Another one off the list and another thing out of the basement. Uh, the ones in the back, so there's a back mat that looks just kind of like that, comes down, tucks around the heater. She's a little rougher. Um, there's kind of a spot where it bubbled up here. Um, it separated the layers. Um, I do have some C-Deck, uh, so it's an adhesive marine foam that I might run. Uh, it looks really nice, but it is a different texture. Um, I did try ordering up some pebbled vinyl. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, so I might see how that lays down in black. Um, we got options, uh, and we got time. Um, but... We got that in, it's kind of nice to do with seats out, everything up to the firewall, it should be pretty good. The only thing I left I have to do is these little fellas, uh, but oddly enough, it was nice to have those out to get this all settled in there. Now that we're done with that, and I think we're done with everything, um, we can tuck those in. They're just a pin and a spring, so they're pretty simple. Um, and then we can jam the old front seats on, and then we'll be good basically from the B pillar to the firewall. Um, so it's definitely starting to look more and more like a a rig you can drive down the road, I'll dig it. Alrighty, gonna keep inching our way back. Got one of our mounts for the uh, driver's seat. And that's our other mount. I do need to check which way that bracket fit. I wanna say it's set that way, but we'll see. Yep, square part goes
So, heard the old beep, battery died. Uh, did tuck the jack back in and tool bag in as long as we got room to get our mitts under there without having a seat in the way. Kind of nice to get her in there. Put a little rubber foot under the back of the jack so it doesn't scuff up the paint too bad. Um, otherwise it just pushes on a rubber bumper up in the front there. Tool bag just clips in. It does need the zipper fixed, uh, but it does have pretty much most of the tools. Uh, so good winter project just to pull it out so a new zipper in it. Uh, but for now we'll tuck it in, get her off the get her off the shelf. And I think we're ready to start dunking seats in. Got the bolts out of the way. So I'm gonna go walk down the steps right behind me there and grab one of the seats. I think it's gonna be the driver's seat. We'll dunk it in, get her snug down, get the other one on, and then it's probably gonna be dinner time. I can't see. Can you tell me? Pretty close. Well, this battery is almost dead, but look at that, two seats. Oh, and I fit. How about that? Dash is looking good. Floors are all looking good. Everything's tucking in nice. Gotta put the center console in, but that's minor. So. Two more things out of the basement. Well, it's been a day or two or three. I'm not sure exactly where we left off on things, but this is kind of where we're going to wrap this one. Uh, had a couple odds and ends that I was able to knock out through the last couple days. Did dunk in the kick vents. They're kind of neat little, neat little items. I've got some tape on them right now to get the gaskets to steal. Uh, but one of the kind of funny FJ40 things, uh, they got these kick vents. Uh, kind of like the old wing windows uh, when you're bombing down the road. Um, those bring in a lot of, a lot of wind. Uh, right on your ankles. You literally have ankle vents. Um, but they got new weather strip and the weather strip has to kind of bed in and until this side gets that crease in it uh this side wants to stick out a little bit it's just nature of the beast uh, i got some tape on there to help put a little more extra pressure obviously the spring isn't super strong i uh, did manage to get the old fuel cap on need some keys Soink. um that was a little bit fiddly work um had to kind of tweak the bracket a bit to fit the tub based on how this cup was set in there when they manufactured this three-quarter tub. But she's in there, got all new hardware, filler caps good to go. Had to put a new little rubber bumper, just a different size. I think there's a little bit more of a lip on this gas filler door than factory. Um, so I needed a longer nub and then I had to push this guy back. But that's not too bad. Ended up replating these guys, threw them in the zinc bath and then gave them the yellow cad kind of look alike um, but as it's a 70s vehicle uh, it does have a locking gas cap uh, luckily it uses the ignition key which is the double sider and then this last one is just for the rear doors why they made another one for the rear doors and didn't just make them all the key i don't know um, but anywho that's in there so feeling pretty good there ended up having to redo some brake lines along the way i got some incorrect fittings um, there's some that have threads to the end and some that don't, and I got a bunch that were threads to the end that needed to be threads that don't. Um, so I had to pull a few brake lines to get those done, but we should have, we're pretty close on the brakes. I think I got to bleed them one more time. I think there's an air bubble somewhere in the back here. Um, but I do have a pedal. Uh, if you pump it a couple times, you're good to go. I'm pretty sure it's the rears, um, but we'll bleed them all the way around one more time. Uh, did manage to dunk the, uh, spare tire carrier on that was another random one of those i've got a half hour let's throw her on um turned out pretty good she was pretty rusty um on these hinges and this latch takes a real beating down here it just gets all the road salt so she was pretty pitted you can see it's still got somewhere but it'll do 
Um, I've just got a piece of rubber in between right now to help keep things until we get her all dialed in. Um, that obviously has to go on there. She holds the tire here. That's what these bolts are for. But until we got it all heat in, leaving some weight off. So let her hang around the back. She can be together. Otherwise, I think it'll do pretty good. Um, there are a couple little rubber bumpers that go on here that kind of keep things snug. Uh, this upper pin was pretty rusted, so there is still a little bit of play. Unfortunately, it's rusted here, or it was corroded, so it's lost some diameter in here. But it didn't lose it down here, so it still fits snug in this bottom holder. But um, there's a little bit of play, free play up in here. Um, the problem, I, I played around a little bit trying to make new bushings, new, new, new bushings, because these are ones I already remade. Um, to bring that in a little bit tighter, uh, but the problem is because it's not corroded and material lost down here uh, You can't get the bushing to slide down the pin to get it up in here So you can't really take this That real little play out of there. We'll see if she rattles. There are people that do sell Kind of oil light bushings and replacement pins if we need to you could just knock these hinges out Pop those out. It's not a big deal. We'll run it and see if we can get it to be quiet. I think we can because uh, it is pretty pretty decent by the time you tighten all the bolts up put a little weight on it and adjust the bumper stops I think we'll do all right we'll see otherwise rear end of the rigs looking pretty good I uh, did tuck in these guys as well um, another one of those I got a half hour might as well knock her out they're weird little lights in that they don't have anything covering the inside they just kind of hang out like that but that's fine I do need to get some clips to run the wires, I'm going to tag them up to the top of the tub rail here um, just to keep it up and out of the way. It does just run down into the corner. Uh, same on the other side. She's got one over there. Um, some of those little twisty adhesive clips I think will work just to keep that nice and tidy. Um, not, a big, not a big deal, but it is nice to get those buttoned down and just everything done. Um, so that was good. Obviously, Matt's everything is looking good here. Uh, did get the air filter on. Um, so that's all done. Uh, I had some snippets earlier. I think I missed some. I don't remember what I filmed. We'll see if you, if there was stuff. Good job, me. If not, I lost some footage. Um, this is my Holly Sniper cooking pot adapter. This was a cooking pot I got off of a thrift shop for $1.25. Um... Cut it down, made a little adapter here, uh, but otherwise uh, pretty good to go from that 5-inch bore sniper to the 3-inch bore air cleaner and just it's got kind of an offset rig. Uh, so that should work alright. Worst case I may need to remake this adapter. I 3D printed it out of ABS. Um, worst case could probably get one kind of milled out of aluminum just to go with the aluminum pot. Um, it is pretty sturdy so we're sitting pretty good there pretty happy with that um, and then just dunked on the heat riser another one of those parts to get out of the basement as long as you got the air cleaner on it should not need to come off all the wiring is tucked in all the brake lines are good they haven't had any leaks or anything so I started dunking those on um, and getting parts out of the basement same vein I did dunk the steering rods on so got that on there they aren't locked down because we'll have to see if we need to adjust them. We'll learn a little bit more. Um, and same way, I actually dunked the old steering wheel on. She's just sitting on there. Um, it's not snug down, so it's easy to pull off and kind of reclock. Um, we're not going anywhere anytime soon, so she's good to go there. Um, but it is nice to have controls to move around around. Do need to get the radiator blood still. Gave her a quick run here. Um, I think I still got air in the system because I have not taken anywhere near the amount of coolant it should hold. But we'll let it run and cool and cycle. That's not a big deal. We got time there. But all in all, you know, we got a clutch, got working ignition system, got a working fuel system, uh, got a steering wheel, got some brakes. Uh, worst case, we also have our e-brake um, got a cooling system so we're checking off those boxes on things that make a an automobile an automobile so feeling pretty good there uh, the horns actually work <laughs> so another one of those things 
things that you need for an automobile horn. Check. Um, so. So that's where we're going to leave this one for today. Uh, a lot of good progress in the last couple of days. A few setbacks here and there, a little bit of stuff that had to come back off and redo, you know, brake line and distributor. It's always nicer when you can put stuff on and leave it on, but what can you do? It's kind of the way things go. You're always going to find a few hiccups here and there when you're doing, doing one of these big jobs. Um, otherwise, feeling pretty good. Uh, I'm going to be real close to throwing the front clip on. That's probably going to be the next pile of stuff. This uh, front clip and getting the rear rear interior, and that's actually kind of the last part of this video. Uh, I got to clear out the garage to shoot some black on the roll bar. I got that all cleaned up. But to do that, got to get the rig out of the garage. And the nice thing is, uh, you know, I got brakes, clutch, engine, steering wheel. I should be able to actually drive this thing under its own power for the first time since about November 4th. It's uh, September 10th right now. Uh, so it's been a little bit. But it'll be nice to move around the garage, nice to have that milestone of running under its own, own locomotion. So, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.